I try to get through a couple quickly. Uh, 66-year-olds, uh, ejection fraction of 15%. Lots of risk factors. There's an atretic lima, severely calcified proximal LED, very complex, tortuous. Uh, so an impella is in place, and you can see that not only is there calcium, but there is a, uh, an aneurysm right in the middle of that calcium. We think it was because of the previously placed lima. So difficult to get into. Here's the other view in the cranial LAO. The problems, of course, are wire. Once you get into the aneurysm, it's very hard to get out. Regular wires didn't work, especially wires didn't work. Try to reverse loop here. This is a 360 inside of the aneurysm. Try to come out the other end at a slightly different angle. I mean, the question is, what do you do when you have something like this? And this is an example, again, of a non-CTO, but adapting a CTO strategy and approach. So you're going through Dissection reentry. This is not a traverse catheter, but it would have been nice. Eventually getting it into the distal portion. Now you face the problem that you've seen in some of the other cases uh, today. What kind of microcatheter can I get through to get this out? And the answer was nothing worked. So we got as close as we could, kind of bring the wire back and forth a few times, create a lumen, and eventually get a rotoblader wire down. And again, I don't use a lot of one two fives, but this is the one where I used it and. Uh, jacked it up to 200,000 RPMs just to try to get through this heavily calcified lesion. And this is the end results. So, I mean, my topic really is to expand upon the previous debate that there are clearly some uh, types of ca cases that you have to have uh, atherectomy to work with. So how'd you get the rotoblader wire down if you couldn't get a microcatheter? Get, it as, get the microcatheter down as far as you can. Okay, so you Take did... the wire and sort of create and daughter out a, a, right, a lumen so for yourself, and then try to work with it as best as you can. Okay. It's challenging. It sounds easy, but it's challenging. Dr. Mehta? Uh, John, great case. Uh, you had any concerns, uh, and I'm sure you passed the rotoblator ac across the aneurysmal segment. Yes, very much so. But we looked at it in multiple angles. Obviously, I couldn't IVIS this, couldn't get anything down to begin with. But in the multiple views, I had 360 of calcium, and it seemed to be external to where the wire was, kind of a poor man's IVIS, if you will to make sure that I've got enough buffer on either side to pass a rotoblader burn. Right. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the reason I mentioned is, I mean, uh, with the, a little uh, a less lucky outcome uh, yeah. with the wire bias, you could... Uh, it, it could, and, but the, he's, bi he's post-bypass, so we obviously have a fibrotic rind. Should I ever get uh, a little bit too deep, it should be able to confine any kind of perforation. So Very good. So you also have lithotripsy as an option, but it's hard to know what would be with, a, with an aneurysm, a true aneurysm, what would be safer. Yeah, um, I, I, I just don't know. You know, you, orbital case. atherectomy also is an option, but then you're creating a big orbit in an aneurysm. So I don't know which of those would be safest. And I agree, it probably depends a lot on the wire bias. Yeah, the main thing on this one was we just couldn't get anything through. And I didn't think orbital would get through that uh, distal portion as a non-front cutter. You may have to start with a small burr yeah. or a small, and then go ahead and get the... Uh, it would be a stepwise progression. Right. I, agree. I agree. Look, I think, uh, uh, I mean, all I can uh, 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 sum, sum it here is that, uh, I mean, everything else here, uh, anything could be tried probably except the cutting balloon. Yes. Agreed. Very good. I think the one to five did a fantastic job. Wiring was very tough, but the case is a beautiful case. Let's move with the second case. Second case. This is a chronic total occlusion of the bit LED in a symptomatic patient. Uh, here you can see the dual injection. You already get a feel before the injection that there's 360 of calcium. You can see the up and down portion. Uh, we were lucky it didn't cross primarily. Again, this was a dissection reentry. Uh, the microcatheter is a mamba catheter that gets down there. There's a distal injection to show that you're intraluminal. And this is meant to uh, demonstrate one uh, significant feature. Balloons are going down. Each one of them ruptures, four of them, up to 35 atmospheres at some point. Still doesn't expand. So this is what we call a grenadoplasty. Still not expanding. There's the four balloons, all of them rupture. What do you do at this point? So you, you have an anterograde approach. But yeah. Why did you wait and rupture four balloons? Um, good point. Good. It seemed like it was going to yield, but it didn't. Uh, I tried, uh, you know, there are different types of polymers that are more resistant, and we just went up the scale. 
uh, from uh, different NC balloons. And then uh, a, a NC Sapphire is actually one that's a little more durable, more like Kevlar. And uh, that didn't work either. So here you're converting to a rotoblader. Okay, case done, right? The next balloon goes down after a rotoblader, and that ruptures. That's a one to five burr. That's a one five burr. One five. One five burr. Now there's it. The, the balloon expands a little bit better than the previous ones, but I still have a resistant area. So well, you, know, you, you probably off. have the dreaded, you know, calcified spicule or a calcified nodule, and the one if you imaged, you'll really learn what's going on. And after the one two five burr, you should be able to do that. But the the other things are you don't have an OPN balloon, of course. That's the balloon that that might yes. do this. Go up to forty point. to forty five atmospheres, and also has a much better burst profile. The other thing, though, is if I if I try to do these lesions with a balloon, I use a short balloon, very short, non compliant balloon, um, because you will get some dog boning even with very non compliant balloons on the end. So if you really concentrate the force with a short balloon, it helps. But you clearly need a bigger burr or an IVL catheter or something more to. Very good. So this is a good example. This is like the first IVL catheter we used, and what's amazing is that. At four atmospheres, after about 40 pulses, it completely expands. So this is an example, and I think that the, if you look at the sonic energy that's distributed to the vessel wall, it sometimes translates out to something like 50 atmosphere inflations, something uh, of that nature in terms of its energy. So a good example uh, of how to move, calling it uh, rototripsy. Clearly there's, I don't think, you know, I know Dr. Waxman mentioned that uh, uh, IVL may take take over a lot of a lot of these calcified lesions, but there's still lesion preparation that has to take place because the balloon will track, but it doesn't. It's not your best tracking balloon. You still have to do some preparation to get there and expand it, and as a result, you get that uh, that result. So that, on that? that's a final stint of a uh, four row stint. Or, or yes. Okay. One quick one here. This is a challenging case. Previous cabbage five years ago, now with a non STEMI, sent to us from an outside hospital, multiple high grade lesions in a very tortuous right coronary. So you have like an early bifurcation? Is that what it is? Yeah. You, well, you have a high, uh, you have an RV marginal branch that is really uh, super marginal and uh, has multiple bifurcations. And of course, it's right there at the takeoff of where your high grade, highest grade lesion is in the vessel. So when you go ahead and try to wire this, where's the wire going? This is my best fellow saying, I can do this. And of course, it's going to be, it's extra luminal and it shuts down. Uh, it took another 15, 20 minutes to put a bend on a hydrophilic wire with a lot of uh, with a gram tip load, a little bit more than what we're used to, to get it down distally and to get a microcatheter down there. So how would you like to proceed from here? Very tortuous, high grade. Calcium. I think one, one two, five burr. Huh? Well, I was concerned about the tortuosity. You've got three 90 degree bends in here. Uh, and so we did try to take balloons. And you end up with a lot of dissections. And you get a balloon that does not go down distally. That mid segment was never approached with a balloon despite the backup and support of a guide extender. So, Pedro, you're right. At some point, you got to say, I'm just going to take. I'm going to cast all uh, caution to the wind. Again, it's a post-bypass patient. Uh, in the worst case, I can recover, hopefully, if there's some kind of minor perforation. But you've got to take a burr down here because it's not going to happen any other way. So Otherwise here is a order of regret. Huh? And it's just going at the beginning very slow, I guess, at the beginning. Yeah, very, very slow at the beginning. Very this, slow. These, these are the polishing runs. Obviously, I didn't give you the beginning. Yeah. This is not the way it yields. It just took a good two to three minutes of uh, intermittent burring just to get past that distal lesion. And of course, it's still it's still a bit of a challenge. You've got a the you probably don't even want to look at this after you do a rotoblader on a heavily calcified tortuous lesion. But this is what it looks like. There's lots of complex uh, guttering. Uh, what looks like the section planes, very similar to what uh, Dr. Keeney showed you earlier in the day. Only this is over a, a longer period of tortuous segment. So, but it does do the job. I mean, it does break it up enough to allow you to, to deliver something. Uh, and, uh, you know, you fight with a little bit, but eventually you get a result that looks a little bit like this. Uh, you have to step almost the entire right corner here. 
John, how would you, just uh, as a matter of uh, speculation, how do you think a one fiber would have managed there? Because often, really, and I, I, Dr. Colombo is here, I could ask him also. I mean, majority of the cases, uh, one to fiber is truly placebo plus. Uh, it this, really, this, yeah, this is not placebo. Uh, this is uh, this is real the real deal. These are the only one to five burrs I've used all year. And it was for a specific reason. And that is uh, either I'm dealing with something that I'm very worried about perforation because I'm close to the edge on the first case. And in this case, I'm close to the edge because I'm dealing with a lot of tortuosity. And I know I'm going to gutter. And if I gutter, if I bias too much and have too big a burr pushing it through, remember this is a three millimeter run, this is a three minute run of 20 second intervals. A one five burr, you know, might push me into, uh, I, I need a sundial to count how long it's gonna be. The nice for seeing this case is this is exactly what the uh, Keeney's case was. Yeah, it is it's very similar, just more tortuous. Yeah, even though it's a one two five bar, you probably got a greater than one five lumen. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, think, I, I think I, that's a good point. You know, when you had the discussion about whether to go up to a one five versus a one two five, I always look at a burr when it goes through and say, did I get the expected lumen? Is it smaller than I expected or is it larger than I expected? Uh, in uh, Dr. Keeney's case, it was larger than what you expected because you, uh, the bias, the guttering that took place, and the fact that you cut it up, obviously this looks like a 1.5 burr uh, went through it. So with that said, I don't think there's any real need to size up to a larger burr. And also sizing for two, two, you know, 0.25 steps are not the way we used to do it. We used to go from the 1.25 to the 1.75, but... Yeah, the, this, the, it's, it's really the surface. It's not the diameter, right? It's the surface area. So uh, I agree. I think the, the issue here more. was perforation. I mean, yeah. and rota perforations are a nightmare. Yeah, yeah but, that, but that really all depends on the wire bias. I mean, the risk of perforation and the size of the channel that you're going to get is really depending on where the wire is. And mm -hmm. this is why, one, it's important to use the floppy wire and not a stiff wire in a case floppy. like this. It takes longer with the floppy wire, but, but you're less likely to perforate. Mm -hmm. The only other thing I'd suggest, it's a great case, John, congratulations, but I, I think you've got to image these cases. I mean, these cases are so complex that, I mean, I don't even know what the true size of that vessel is. And so we did this disease you're not appreciating. I, I did not put it down. I did not show you the picture. I got okay. the uh, IVUS catheter down past the first bend, but not the second. I did the image afterwards. Yeah. In, in the interest of time, I'm not showing you. You mean that. at the end after the stenting? Uh, I, I got it down to that midsection. I could not get it beyond there mm -hmm. where the balloons all got stuck. So that makes me worry that something's not fully expanded, especially if you can't oh, get this. No, at the end I did. Well, at the end you got I it. Did. At the end you at got the it. At the beginning, down. I okay. did not. Beginning. After ballooning, I could only get it down to that first bend, but I couldn't. How get did it all look at the end? Uh, there's a little bit of narrowing right there, as you might expect, where it was stuff. I mean, it's about a 30% narrowing. Uh, I'd gone to pretty high pressure with the appropriate size balloon. I just said, I'm. You know, if it comes back, then I'll use uh, lithotripsy. I think that's a good good way to do it, rather than risk any further damage there. The other thing, uh, Greg, and, uh, to your comments about wire bias and how to try to minimize that with the floppy, the technique that was being used at the table, where they're actually defeating the break and pulling the wire back and forth a little bit, is is a great technique for this as well. Well, this is wonderful. I think the vessel that you started with and the vessel that you finish. It's totally different. So congratulations. Those are chicken out type of issues, my friend.